Well, Moriel has changed its financial structure over the years because there are several Moriels, each one separately incorporated under the laws of each country. Moriel Australia, New Zealand, USA, Great Britain, and so forth. They are all legally and financially separate. It's not a monolith. It's multiple ministries that are all Moriel and affiliated to each other, having a common statement of faith, a common uh, logo, but administratively and financially and legally all different from each other. Initially, the finance was all provided, frankly, from my own pocket. There was no money. I left the Pentecostal ministry to the Jews in the aftermath of the importation of American money preachers into Great Britain, my objection to kingdom now theology that was replacementist, even anti-Semitic, some of it, and, and also this was followed by the laughing and drunken revivals in which I had to sever contact completely from what I had come from. Uh, so I had to begin Moriel basically nothing. Most people in Moriel apart from the missionaries in the third world and in certain other countries. Most people in Moriel are either part-time or they're volunteers. Most, like myself, are tent makers. They have a secular job or a secular business. Their primary income does not come from the ministry. The exception would be those in full-time missionary work, taking care of sick children in the third world or something of that nature, be it in Africa, be it in the Philippines, or new work in India, those people would be full-time and looked after by the ministry, and some would have their own support in addition to Moriel. So they would be full-time jobs, people who were in mainly third-world countries, working full-time in missions and evangelism and taking care of children. That's our big charitable work. So yes, th they would be salaried. The staff, the administration, the teams, again, most have secular jobs or businesses. Uh, and in addition to working for Moriel, people who do the administrative things, filming, internet people, things of this nature, are largely part-time or volunteers. They're either part-time or else they're volunteers. Very few people would be salaried in, in Moriel outside of full-time missionaries. Some would have a part-time salary. Now again, in the beginning, I largely had to finance it myself. Um, fortunately, I was able to be blessed by the Lord in certain business ventures with Christian partners that enabled me to do certain things. I had, after my automobile closure in 1996, major medical bills until the legal settlement came, at the same time putting my children through private school, through university, and through law school times two. And I did that by God's help, with God's help, without any debt, but then also to fund Moriel. In the beginning, it was easy because it was only based in Britain and then Britain and America. When it began going into other countries and when we began opening missions in the third world, then it became obviously more complicated, m much more complicated, because each one had to be legally incorporated separately. So the finance. We have stood vociferously against money preachers and word faith preaching, financial con artistry, people prostituting the word of God for their own aggrandizement. We've always opposed it. And therefore, we believe financial transparency is important important for ourselves, that we're quite open about it. We are a UK registered charity in Great Britain. Moriel UK is a registered charity in Great Britain under the laws of the British Charities Commission. And in the United States, we are what's known as a 5013 registered with the IRS. And the finances have to be put every year in the hands of the IRS, and they put them on the internet and so forth. They can put them in the public domain, publish them, whatever they wish to do. Everything has to be on the table and above board. Now, as far as myself, I do have a secular business, and about, again, I can't let the right hand know what the left hand does, so I can't give you figures, but about 
60% of my personal income uh, from this business goes to the ministry. About 40% goes to me. That's how I, I divide it. I do not accept any royalties from my books, and neither did I ever accept any royalties from videos, CDs, cassettes, DVDs. All of that was donated. I never took any royalties of any kind. But something happened about three years ago. Internet became so evolved that CDs, although we still have them for some people who want them, began to be replaced by what was just going on the internet. So we began Moriel TV. Now our prices for CDs and DVDs were always kept rather low. And again, I took no royalties and we used the proceeds to finance the ministry. But we took a step of faith. We put everything out for free on the internet, on YouTube, on Moriel TV. Everything is out there free in the public domain, freely you have give, freely received. Now, technologically, that would not have been possible at one time. You had to copy CDs, DVDs, videos, whatever, the packaging, the postal costs. For all of its warts and problems, Internet has made it possible for us to give things away that we used to have to sell. Not to sell for a profit, but to sell to cover the cost of producing them and getting them out there. Our policy was we used the proceeds of what we sold to subsidize the ministry and to subsidize what we gave away to anything from prison ministries to poor countries and so forth. So it was never a profit-making enterprise. It was a money-losing enterprise. And Moriel people dug into their own pockets and gave sacrificially of their money and their time and to a degree still do. So I've got a business myself. Now we have also something called designated funds. Designated funds. Moriel does not ask for money. If you want to donate, if you're blessed by the teaching, the facility is there for you to do so. But we're not trying to finance the ministry by the sale of recorded materials anymore or anything of that nature. It's just out there. On rare occasions, we did financial appeals. The last one was the Haiti earthquake appeal a number of years ago. In times of very major disasters, humanitarian disasters, Moriel did financial appeals and we gave the money away to other ministries who were active in those places. Missionary Aviation Fellowship being one of them, churches that we knew of who were honest being another. But it had to be a major disaster. The first time we did it, was for the Chernobyl children coming to the UK for medical treatment, and they were skin was snow white as a result of not having enough erythrocytes, red cells, and uh, it was just absolutely horrible. A few times we've done that. Generally, we do not do appeals, don't like to. We ask the Lord for money. We don't ask people. We don't ask Christians. Nobody takes any royalties. I've never taken any royalties. It all goes to the Lord's work in the ministry. And we, we support the ministry from, from our own means. I do it from my business. Others, such as David Lister, do it from their secular work and so forth. But there are contributions. Now, with these designated funds, by law, by federal law in the United States, um, the funds have to go, all of it, to where it's designated for. If we receive money for Africa, it must go to Africa. If we receive money for Israel, for the Jerusalem Evangelism Fund, it must go to Israel. We receive funds for the, for the Philippines, it must go to the children, the rubbish dump children that we rescue in the Philippines. It must go to where it's designated. Some of the funding is designated for the support of certain missionaries. Again, it could be Thailand, could be the Middle East, could be Africa, now India. If it's designated for the support of a specific missionary, it must go to them. For myself, I take no salary in, in the UK and I take no fixed salary in the USA, no salary. 
if people give a love offering or a contribution and they designate it, I'm allowed to accept it, but I'm not allowed to ask for it by the rules of Moriel. Neither am I allowed to take it in terms of a fixed or standing salary per se. It's contribution based and it's voluntary. So if somebody says this is for India, it must go to India. If someone says this is for a particular missionary in, in some country, Thailand or Africa, it must go to their personal support. Because I have a profile, some money comes to my own personal support. This is for Jacob, a love offering for Jacob. Uh, it's probably, last year was about 90,000 US dollars before tax, after tax would be about 55,000 US dollars that was designated for me. Now it must come to me by law. I of course pay taxes on any honorariums designated for me. I receive in the UK, I pay British taxes on that. And I pay American federal taxes and state taxes in the United States. So I'm taxed about 35% of my income. So if I got $90,000, you're talking perhaps $55,000. Uh, but what I do with it is up to me. I can donate it back. Nobody says I can't donate it back and take a tax deduction. That's perfectly legal. But I can't ask for it, and I don't take it in the form of a, of a regular salary, per se. And uh, again, it, it's obviously I have to pay taxes the same as everyone, uh, which I do. Um, I pay all taxes I'm required to pay in both the UK and the USA. So that's essentially it. People send money for India, it goes to India. If they send money for the support of David, it goes to David Lister or Dave Royal, if it's personally designated. If it's for the work in India, it goes to India. For the work in Israel, it goes to Israel. Designated funds always go to where they are designated by law, and we comply with that. It's in our annual audit. After taxes, I can take the money, but I'm also free to do what I want with it. Same as my secular business. I am free to let the ministry profit from my secular business, which I do. I just don't want to talk about those figures because those figures are the right hand, left hand. What they do, is, a, is the Lord said not, not to say that, so I won't. But what's in the public domain, what's donated to Moriel for any missionary or any country or any person, including myself, that has to be entered into the annual audit and made publicly available. That's essentially how we work. Uh, although there's no salary, obviously, I, I get designated honorariums and things of this nature, which I don't ask for, but I do get, and that would be the same of the other people in Moriel. That would be the same. We're not well paid by the standards of some major mission organizations and churches, I admit, but again, we're mostly tent makers and have our own businesses and livelihoods on the side. What I do think is important is where we are now. We're in a comfort inn. We have a whole team here for a Morial board meeting and uh, some other meetings, and we're having the Canadian meeting and the American meeting at the same time because it was cheaper and more logistically practical to do it that way. And we're all in California at a comfort inn. Uh, Holiday Inn Express, those are the general standards of places that we stay. Yesterday, I think we ate in Applebee's. Today, I ate in Arby's. We, when anything's on the expense of the ministry, we try to be economical. Um, we don't believe in living slubriously at the expense of the ministry. Uh, now, when I travel for my secular business, it's something different. Uh, then again, I've got to entertain clients, keep a certain standard. But what I will often do is when I'm away from my business, I will do ministry at the same time. So if you see me in a better hotel, a four-star hotel or something, or a five-star hotel, then I'm doing my own personal business and ministry in addition to it. Uh, that's essentially the way, the way we work it. Um, the idea is we should not live extravagantly at the expense of the ministry. 
Now, most of you know the reason I'm so chubby is because I have lymphatic edema. I have non-dietary obesity, lymphatic edema. In other words, 96 or 97 percent of the people who are overweight are overweight because of lack of exercise and eating too much. Unfortunately, there's this other 3 percent or 4 percent. Some people, it's glandular. They have a leptin deficiency, often in women after, after a complicated pregnancy. Or there is pharmacological obesity, people who have to take steroid drugs or cortisone drugs for lupus and things like this. Again, they get the same effect. Well, in my case, I have lymphatic obesity. I go around with 50 kilos plus of interstitial lymphatic fluid. Uh, almost impossible to, well, it's impossible to lose weight. You can only manage it. And I do that, but because of it, um, on long flights, I'm not able to go on long flights in economy seats. If it's a small, short flight at two hours, three hours, I'll take an economy seat. But if it's a longer flight, I'm medically not allowed to uh, because of the risk of my condition. I'm hyper prone to cellulitis. I almost died from it in 2015. I'm at higher risk than most people for deep vein thrombosis and things like this because of my lymphatic condition. This is problematic. I also had a neck injury in 1996. They did not want me cramped in small seats, but that was settled within the legal settlement for the accident. But this is just my personal mess. Um, I, I can't drive anymore more than two to two and a half hours. I'm not allowed to. With me, sitting down is bad. My legs turn into sequoia trees. Walking is good. Standing is bad. Sitting down is bad. Leg elevation is good. Uh, that's just the way it is. So driving is not a good means of transport anymore. And I drive and speak a lot less than I used to. I can't drive those distances. And even like if I'm in London and I have to go to the north of England, I normally just used to drive. Well, now I have to take a flight. You know, I'll get an economy flight, obviously. But I can't uh, drive long distances anymore. So all of these things become factors in, in our operating expenses. But I assure you, you know, if you see me do, or anyone in Moriel doing something uh, upmarket, uh, it's not at the expense of the ministry. Uh, we have secular businesses and we conduct the secular businesses the way any other secular business is conducted. You have tax deduction expenses and so forth. Um, but yes, Moriel profits from my personal business. If anyone designates money for any of our staff or for me or for a missionary, it goes to them. It goes to them. Of course, it is taxable. And uh, what you're left with is not all that much, certainly not a fixed salary, but it, it is something that has to be publicly reported. So we do publicly report it. It goes in our audit. It goes to the uh, charity commissions, the tax authorities, as the case may be. We try to keep everything above board. You can go online and look at Morial's figures in, in most countries that do it. Certainly, the United States would do it. Um, so that's essentially how we work. Uh, we try to be frugal. It's the Lord's money. Um, our biggest budget is undoubtedly missions. We spend more money on foreign missions, evangelism, and taking care of the children in the third world. That's the biggest thing. Now, to be perfectly honest, I speak regularly in a particular communist country that I cannot name. I speak there regularly, and I have to meet with the underground church pastors secretly. We do the pastor seminars. Theological training and education is at a very low standard in these countries with this persecution and so forth. So when I go into one or two of these countries, I must go in as a Western businessman or as a Western tourist we will stay at a better hotel than with the other tourists. You know, we will go to wait like any other tourist or any other business person looks. 
simply because that's part of the way the game is played. Uh, these countries that I go to now and do these seminars, I first began going to them smuggling Bibles. I began as a Bible smuggler in these countries, and then we made connections with the local underground churches. There we have to maintain a front, and it can be a bit expensive, but it's an absolute necessity under those conditions. Um, otherwise, here in California, or, you know, I'll stay in the Holiday Inn Express or the Comfort Inn or something like that, no complaints. If you see me doing something better, it's associated with my, my own secular business. Um, that's basically it. Um, nobody in Moriel makes a lot of money from the ministry. Nobody. Our missionaries are very self-giving people, very hardworking. We all work quite hard. The travel schedule I have even now that it's been cut back with the edema, most people would find, frankly, grueling. Um, in the secular world, the people in Moriel, and it's not just me, would be paid substantially more money for the work they do and the time they put in and the travel and so forth. They'd be paid at much higher salary, obviously, but we're not in it for a salary, we're in it for Jesus. We warn about people who are in the ministry for sordid gain. We warn about the ministry, those who are in the ministry for sordid gain. Now, Paul says those who work hard at preaching and teaching the word are double honorarium, worthy of double honorarium, and all, we accept that. If the ministry demands somebody full-time, we accept that. But apart from our missionaries, most of us are tent makers or are volunteers or are part-time, mainly. So that's essentially how Morio works. Uh, again, the figures are annually audited and they're in the public domain and they're reported to the appropriate authorities. If money is designated to me as a gift, this is for Jacob, I can take it, but I cannot ask for it. Uh, it doesn't come in the form of a fixed salary. Uh, of course, I pay taxes on it, but then I can do with it what I want after I get it. Uh, again, my business, Moriel profits from my business, but that's, again, personal. Can't discuss that in terms of figures. Um, that's about it. The big step of faith was when we stopped selling recorded materials and put everything on the Internet for free, we knew we would just need to trust the Lord for the expenses of operating the ministry. And the Lord has been very gracious. He has met every need. He has moved people to support the ministry. He has not left us without means, viable means, of continuing his work. It was a step in faith, and we did it because we believed the Lord wanted us to. Freely you give, freely receive. We could not see charging people for this stuff when we could make it totally free on the Internet, which was not possible 10 years ago or, or even five years ago to the degree it is now with Moriel TV, Vimeo, Roku TV. So a lot of the ministry has become Internet-focused. Again, if the Lord leads you to support the ministry, we welcome your support, but we covet your prayers. We welcome your support if you believe the Lord would have you support the ministry, but we covet your prayers. You're not going to see anybody asking for money for Moriel. You're not going to see any fundraising drives or anything th like this unless it's a major, major humanitarian disaster and there are Christian ministries involved in alleviating it that we believe the Lord would have us help. And we've done that. Uh, we've had stuff in the Philippines and other things like this after the, after the monsoons and uh, typhoons and things like this. The last really big one was the earthquake in, in Haiti where we were able to buy electrical generators, water purification systems, things that cost a lot of money, and people gave very generously. Every penny went to, to Haiti, you know, where every penny will go to the Philippines or every penny. Designated funds goes to where it's designated. Whether it's for a ministry or an individual, that's where it goes. It's all above board. We are very, very careful. Uh, what people do in their secular business, apart from the ministry, is up to them. 
again, most of our people have businesses of some kind, or at least many of them do. I certainly do, and other people do. Um, we also have people who are in full-time ministry with churches, and they may be salvied as a pastor or something like this, and Moriel helps salvie them as pastors and things like this, but there's, there's only one or two people like that. We thank the Lord for the volunteers he's given us and for the part-time people. Again, we have some wonderful people. They're all underpaid. <laughs> They're all underpaid by the standards of the world, all of them. Uh, that's simply the way it is. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, again, we're only saying this because we believe accountability and honesty is important for us because we've taken such a strong stand against the mammon worshipers, against the word faith prosperity preachers, against people who've made themselves personally wealthy at the expense of the ministry. So because we've opposed that, we feel it's really important, or we have the conviction it's really important to be above board ourselves. But thank you so much for listening. God bless.